It's five o'clock Wednesday. Welcome to Joyful Echo with Jean and Kathleen on Carolina Catholic Radio Charlotte, where we gather together as sisters in friendship to echo God's love. Now here are your hosts, Jean and Kathleen. Hello, ladies. This is Kathleen. This is Jean. Welcome to Joyful Echo. What a great show we have for you today. It is going to blow your mind. Oh, yeah. We love to do that. Don't yes. We? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. That's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to blow your mind. Yes. So those of you who can see the video, you already know that there are other folks here with mm-hmm. us. So before we get too far in, let's introduce them, Jean. Sure. To my right is Katie. Hello. Katie Hesser, and to my left is Ryan, Ryan Vermillion. We roped them in, um, but we're to, to give glory to God, to give glory to God. We have a great surprise for you today. That's right. And Jean, you were talking about a particular scripture reference that really leads into today's show. So if you want to just do yes. that as a little teaser. We, we pray before the show, and the image that I had in my, my mind's eye was the leper, the 10 that were healed, the one that came back, the one that came back to give thanks to Jesus. So this is what this show is about. Katie coming back and giving Jesus great glory for her healing that she received from our former guest that was here before, Alan Ames, when she attended the event. Yes, if you haven't heard that show, when you're finished with today's show, go back and listen to that because Alan um, does a wonderful job explaining that gift he's received from the Lord. But yes, Katie, if you would give us a little bit of background. So what was going on in your life prior to going to the Alan Ames service? service? Well, I was there in the first That's place. Right. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, probably about, well, I know exactly. Um, 10 years prior, July 6, 2012, um, I had just come back from a trip. Mm-hmm. to London. Had a fantastic time, um, but when I got back, I just could not seem to shake the jet lag. I just mm-hmm. was feeling run down, tired, and I just, and one night, just a couple days later, I just sat down to dinner, and I could not stop shaking. Mm-hmm. There was, um, it was a, a very, and it'll be strange to imitate, but like this, I could not stop shaking. It went on for hours, mm-hmm. and then I basically lost the ability to speak Apparently, I started stammering. I couldn't speak, with, just with great difficulty. Mm. And this went on for, like I said, several hours. And I'm like, I think maybe we should go to the ER. Yes. <laughs> you know, I was only 39 at the time. I mm-hmm. thought, am I having a stroke? It, right. So, you know, so that's we my husband took, took me to the hospital. And um, they were able to rule out um, a stroke, thank goodness. But they didn't know what was going on. It was very mm-hmm. strange. I was still shaking and having all this difficulty speaking. And, uh, but they said, well, we're just going to admit you and Mm. let's run some more tests. And I am not a huge fan of hospitals. So Mm. I said, well, that's okay. I'm feeling a little bit better, but they did exact a promise from me. It's like, well, go see a neurologist. Let's try to figure out what's going on. And that kind of, um, set me off a course for the next 10 years of really bizarre symptoms. I mean, I would just be walking and all of a sudden I would just fall down. I wouldn't be able to walk anymore. Um, I would be laying on the bed and my body would just flop myself all across the bed. I'd have strange nosebleeds that were very painful. I would hear weird sounds um, all the time. I just ached all the time. It was everything. I'm like, I never knew what my body was going to do to me next. Mm -hmm. It was just a series but eventually kind of those strange symptoms uh, Mm -hmm. seemed to just become more sporadic and um, then I was just left with what was the most debilitating for me, which was um, just fatigue. I just could not get, I was in bed. I had good days here and there, right. but for the most part, I was in bed 20 plus hours a day. Mm-hmm. And um, I, uh, in the last couple of years, I really needed to be on oxygen quite a bit of the time mm-hmm. because even talking just left me I, I didn't have enough oxygen to breathe. I, as soon as, you know, I would pretend to be talking with people and, hey, great. And as soon as I left them, I, I have to get on my oxygen machine. It was, wow. um, and so it was just seemingly just getting worse. And I've been to, I tried so many doctors and tried so many treatments and healing. Um, I went to several healing services and, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I would, you know, fear better spiritually, but I, you know, as far as physical, mm-hmm. I didn't have any healing there. And in fact, I'd actually been to an Alan Ames service prior, um, a couple years ago, when he, mm-hmm. I think it was maybe his 
second trip mm -hmm. to, when mm -hmm. he came to yes. North Carolina. And it was beautiful, of course. But then I think what um, kind of turned the, well, there's, there were layers. Are, are there always, always. layers about how this mm -hmm. happened? But I, um, as part of my husband's family, we did a uh, book study together. We read mm -hmm. Bob Shook's um, mm -hmm. Be Healed, yes. mm -hmm. which is We're a beautiful book. That. Yeah. And <clears throat> it really helped me ask, it asked me the question, and I was kind of alone to find the answer, and that was, do you trust Jesus? And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. I had the answer, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I do. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of an alarming <laughs> realization. And um, because I realized that as, because, and we had this one scene, I don't know if you remember it in the book, where he asks, he talks about the story from the gospel where Jesus asks, the, the man who's been laying by the pool for 38 mm -hmm. years or whatever it was mm -hmm. says, do you want to be healed? Right. Which, you know, is kind of a startling question, right? Of course he wants to be healed. But it did make me think, like, am I for, I mean, I hated being, because I was super active. I loved doing all this, so I hated it. But at the same time, I'm like, am I holding on to this illness for some reason? And I realized that I kind of made it a bargaining chip with God. Mm -hmm. I thought that, Lord, if I take this for the team, right, will you keep my family safe? Because my mm. family's safety was paramount. You know, it's mm. like, I can't imagine the grief that I would, I will, I will do this. If you promise me, it was like a bargaining chip. Right, you know? were bargaining. So it a wasn't a chip. conscious, every no. day you're, I'm going to do this today kind of a thing. It was, it was just, something that was revealed to you yes, that was happening. Yes, okay. that I realized mm -hmm. that, that I was doing that. And, um, and so I know, one, of course, that thinking doesn't make any sense. Of course it doesn't make any sense. And also it just really revealed to me, I, I don't have that trust that I need mm -hmm. to have with God. And so based on that, one of my, uh, my sister-in-law is in the Rigmig Christi. Mm -hmm. And she had told me about this healing service offered through the Encounter School of Ministry. Yes. And um, it was an online thing. And so I thought, <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so this was March 8th, I think, um, of this past year. And um, so basically, they you kind of get in a breakout room, and they have um, three people who are training in right. the healing ministry um, pray with you, mm -hmm. and they kind of reveal after they pray with you and taking a moment to think and reflect what God wants them to. Share, then they share that with you, mm -hmm. and and I'd ask specifically. They said, "Do you have anything particular you want to pray for?" I said, "Well, physical healing, and also for trust. I have got to get rid of this, mm -hmm. you know, bargaining chip that I have with mm -hmm. God." And, um, and when they prayed with me, it was really one of the most extraordinary experiences mm -hmm. of my life because I just, I felt like I got just a glimpse of God's love yes. for me. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I can't even put it into words. I mean, it was overwhelming just feeling like, holy cow. And just, and when you know someone loves you that much, how can you not trust them? Right. 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 You know, the and, concept of bargaining. Oh, it's so, bargaining. It was like, right. what am yes. I, I mean, and it just completely wiped that out. That was mm -hmm. gone. And I think that that set the stage because the next week mm -hmm. is when Alan Ames came. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because I finally let go of that bargaining chick. I finally realized you know, my, God's love for me, like mm -hmm. even just a small glimpse of this, just like, boom, if you can imagine like this big wave coming toward you, that is what it felt like. And because of that, I had that trust and I was able to go in to the healing service with Al Mays, um, which was, and just like allow it to, to receive God's love for me. And okay. I that's, that's what so stage. before we go yeah. <laughs> into what actually happened yes. at the service, we also have Ryan Vermillion with mm -hmm. us. And Ryan, you were at the service as well, right. but in a different capacity. Not that you weren't right. open to healing yourself, right. but if right. you could tell us kind sure. of what brought you to there. Sure, I didn't have way. a healing process like that to go towards. I, Jean asked me to go to uh, to help out with first the service at St. Therese mm -hmm. and then the service at St. Mark. And um, there's a few people in my life I can't say no to, and Jean is one of them. <laughs> she says... Ryan, is will a you, force. It's Ryan, will you? And I said, yes. And that means she told me what she wants me to do. And so um, I had been to the healing service a couple years before. Uh, my wife, Margie, took me to that. And we went to that. And it was an unbelievable service. But that was mm -hmm. the first time I'd ever been exposed to anything like a healing service. Mm -hmm. Moved forward four years, and Jean says, would you like to help us at St. Therese as a catcher? 
And so I have absolutely no idea what that meant. But right, because we're I not talking sure. baseball. No, or, so what? Or fishing. I like yeah, to fish. Or fishing, you know? okay. I fish. Now, if I'm a fisherman, I'm not a catcher, right? So, I go, of course, Gene, I'd be more than happy to be a catcher. Just wear a white shirt. I said, you got it. I'll wear a white shirt, <laughs> and I'll show up, and I'm sure you're going to explain me what I have to do once I, once I get there. And it was... Um, it was great that I volunteered for the next night, and I wanted to go to Greensboro the following day. Yes. It was just so. Um, Can you explain to sure. our listeners what a catcher does? Sure. Um, and why you have to wear a white shirt? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be identified. Okay. Also, <laughs> we there's probably so at Saint Teresa, it's the same as Saint Mark. We we're probably twelve to fifteen men, and we came together. And what we did is we were there to help the recipients of the healing, of the blessing, of the Holy Spirit. We are there to help them, one, not get hurt, mm -hmm. and try and just help them move from coming up to the altar, then back to their seat, or back onto the floor, or someplace safely. Mm -hmm. So my, our role was not to interfere with what was going on, to be in the background, but in case we were needed, we needed to help someone out. And so that's what our role was. Our role was to help in the background, not interfere with the Holy Spirit, not interfere with what Alan was trying to do with the recipient, but just to be there for support and help if needed. Now, I'm sure our listeners are like, why would someone need help? Right. And I'll explain to you why. Often a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, because it is the supernatural, our natural bodies respond in the supernatural. So often with Alan Ames and with many healing services that you can go to, you can have a bodily sensation of heat, which is a sign of healing in the Holy Spirit, of uh, goosebumps, of an electrical feeling, and some are in a rest. It's called a slaying in the spirit where you're resting in the spirit. So your body naturally goes into a rest and our catchers stand behind each person and they just gently lay them down so the Holy Spirit can do its work. It's like, um, I would explain it as if you are in surgery and you don't know what's going on and the Holy Spirit is there working, working, working. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. But it's not jarring. No. It's, it's not scary. No. no, and you're fully aware. Mm -hmm. You're not unconscious. You know, this is a, you have come, the natural has come into the supernatural. And of course, our bodies respond in a in a way, because the supernatural, super. <laughs> and uh, so Ryan's job was to catch when one was going to rest in the spirit. Right. And I think the Lord wanted me to have that right off the bat. Because the very first person I had was the very first slain of that evening. It, wow. was, a young, it was a young girl. She was probably in her late teens. And, uh, and I had to help her down to the ground, and I'm, this is my first time right. being in this role, so I helped her down to the ground, and she was resting in the spirit, and I remember being over top of her, not sure what to do at that moment, mm -hmm. and just standing there with her, and Mary Fink came over, she's, she's okay, move on to the next person, <laughs> so we're just going to step over top of her, we just, <laughs> and, we moved, and we just kept moving, because there's so many people who yes. wanted to come up, and there's so many people who wanted to, to have the healing, that when you were slayed, we let you stay. We mm -hmm. kept an eye on you from a distance, but the minute you started moving, we'd help you back up, help you to your seat. But that happened very early in my um, catching career <laughs> that <laughs> someone was slayed, very first one. And it's, it wasn't, right, it wasn't dead, but it wasn't like they fell back. It's like they right. was just, I just assisted them down, protect mm -hmm. their head, and just moved on to the next mm -hmm. person. And it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a very interesting and humbling. Uh, for the catcher. It's a humbling experience because here you are helping someone who has been um, slayed, who mm -hmm. has been affected in a mm -hmm. positive manner by the Holy Spirit. And right. I'm just there to help that person and, and to move on to the next person. And sometimes, yes, you were saying some people were, were slayed. Some people were frozen almost at that moment. And they just stood there not knowing kind of what to do. They were just, they, it was taken. And, and so I would gently come up to them and talk to them. Are you okay? And it was kind of, I'm fine. And then you just kind of move them on uh, and move them on. And so it was, um, yeah, the first night was, was so powerful for me that when you said, hey, would you help us again? I, I, was, I jumped at the opportunity to go to St. Mark. And I'm glad I had the experience of St. Therese before St. Mark because St. Mark 
we probably slayed twice as many people as St. Martin as we did St. <laughs> Therese. So I'm glad I had that experience uh, mm-hmm. at St. Therese. Yes. So now we are at this point mm-hmm. of the evening when Alan Ames is at St. Mark and Katie, you are there, and Ryan, you are there, and we are going to go to break. Yes. But don't go away because you want to hear what happens next. <laughs> I'm Tammy Harris, and I'm the founder and executive director of the Ursus Institute. We fight human trafficking both locally and abroad. I hope you can join me on Sunday, December the 4th, for our annual fundraiser, Fall for a Better Tomorrow. Text me at 704-780-2933 for ticket information, or keep an eye out on our website, www.ursusinstitute.net, and Ursus is spelled U-R-S-U-S. Hello, Carolina Catholic Media family. This fall brings more new programs and ideas to grow your Carolina Catholic Media apostolate. You'll find all access to our local programs on air, online, and on demand with nearly 1,000 audio podcasts and YouTube videos available in our vast library. You'll hear more local parish, school, and ministry news, plus big events being held throughout the fall. Be sure to ask about reserving a Carolina Catholic Live broadcast for your event. We encourage you to get involved, join us, and catch the spirit. The Carolina Catholic Media Apostolate is a 501c3 nonprofit. We are 100% funded by you. Please consider a one-time donation, monthly pledge, business sponsorship, or become a program underwriter. Every dollar supports our evangelization mission to spread the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith across the Carolinas. Thank you for discerning your role in the Carolina Catholic Media Apostolate. May God bless you abundantly. Hello, I'm Elsie Spady, the host of Healed and Restored. My show is dedicated to making a difference in people's lives by showing them how the healing of the body, mind, and spirit is possible and available to all God's broken children. I invite you to tune in every Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. Each week, I invite a different guest, and together we discuss all the different facets of healing. Thank you for tuning in and for supporting the work at Carolina Catholic Radio. God bless. healing that Katie had when Alan Ames came to St. Mark. And we've covered ground already about what brought them right. to St. Mark. Katie seeking the healing of the Lord in a new place of trust. Ryan there to assist people um, as a catcher. As a catcher. <laughs> and so before we go forward with what happened, Katie, when you came up, Ryan, I want to ask you for our listeners, was this the first time that you've seen people experience the Holy Spirit in this way? And and how, yeah, we'll just go with that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so as I said, I was at the uh, event four years with, uh, with Alan Ames. But seeing it from a pew mm-hmm. is very different than seeing it two feet right. away. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a completely different um, feeling for, obviously, for the, the person being blessed and for the catcher. So this is the first time I had ever seen anyone slay. This is the first time I had an up-close and personal uh, touch with that person. Uh, so, yes, it was the first time I'd ever seen the Holy Spirit um, Enact on somebody and the person to react to the Holy Spirit to the way that that, that people did. In a physical way. Yeah, it was All unbelievable. Right. I bet. Yeah. I bet. All right. So, Katie, here you are. Yes. You're at St. Mark. Okay. You're in this new place of trust. Exactly. Take, take it away. 
Okay, so we go in that night, and the per church is already packed. I think there are probably like close to a thousand people. It was over a thousand, was, easily. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, we did find a seat kind of in the middle. And I remember from being there a few years before, I'm like, this lasts a little while. I'm going to go visit the bathroom first. And so when I go back to the narthex, I see that there are a number of priests setting up to do confession. And I see a particular priest um, that was from our uh, old parish. And I'm like, and there's just a little prompting. I thought, oh, she said, you need to go to him for confession tonight. Mm. Okay, I'm going to tuck that away for mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. and so then I go back to my seat and we're sitting there and um you know we have mass which is beautiful and then all the names start speaking and um you know i know he just speaks from the heart or from right. you know the holy spirit coming in you know is planning and you just wow you know just amazing just watching the you know right. the holy spirit after this man is just incredible and uh, then we have the the he invites everyone up to the altar so there were a lot of people who want to have this happen. And so by the time I am able to get up there, um, I'm, I'm one of the last people. And um, go on up there, and um, <clears throat> there are indeed a number of people laying on the ground. So that was kind of an interesting experience, kind of climbing over people to get to where you go in line. And I had, you know, these prayers in my mind. I'll keep this in mind, keep this in mind, keep this in mind. Um, when he's praying for me, you know, I am asking for physical healing again. And also, um, just, I said, if you do heal me, God, please give me the grace to know what you want me to do mm -hmm. with that healing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's got to be That's wise. purpose, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I need I need both of those. Sorry to be greedy, but I need both of you them. Need you need to have a lot of bargaining <laughs> That's right. I know You've been bargaining. healed of the bargaining mentality. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. From Experience in encounter ministry. Yes, so been healed of that, yes, the, that's, yeah, the understanding, yes. and now you're coming for the physical. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that comes into play in our. Yeah, story. let's come back to yeah, that in, a, that, in yeah. the next show. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, go yes. ahead. <laughs> so, so I go up there and I'm trying to keep those, the prayers in mind, but then when Alan Gaines comes and puts, you know, he puts his hands right on, on your face and everything, whoop, it's gone. I totally forgot what I was supposed to be, but I, he comes and he actually puts, you know, he does two people at a time, and yeah. so when he does this and puts it on both your cheeks at different times. And everyone has asked me to explain, well, what did it feel like? And I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. It was just like, whoosh. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a whooshing feeling. It's like, well, I think I may be one of the people that were a little bit frozen, you know, but yeah. whoa, mm -hmm. whoa, just what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and they said, do you need to go sit down? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. So I just sit down right there in the first pew. And, you know, tears are streaming down my face. I'm just, like, overloaded with joy. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. But I'm still not quite sure, you know, no. what happened. I right. was like, wow, right. wow, what was this? And um, I'll, I'll tell the, the ending part because the priest is important in this story. But I will say this, and I did not know this until a week later, that my husband told me, again, a week later, he said, you know when you were healed, I felt it too. Wow. Mm. I'm like, wow. What that unity. Yeah, that confirmation. Mm -hmm. You're joined in the flesh. You know, I thought that was really And that's the amazing. reading today. Oh, no. recording. <laughs> yes. Perfect. On the day we're taping, it's, it's the, the Ephesians the, reading. It's the feed. Yes. Yes. Wow. They become one. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, leave yeah. mom and dad and you become one flesh. Oh, there we go. Yes. Well, that was certain. That, that certainly held true. Um, so I, I go back and then I'm like, well, I still, because I've been waiting in line for confession all this time before when, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss mm -hmm. getting up to the be healed. So then, um, I'm like, okay, and I need to go back to confession now. So I, I get back and there are only a couple people left. So I'm waiting and, um, then I make my confession and, and then I say afterwards, you know, father, I think that I was just healed. And he said, that's wonderful. He said, but don't forget the most important was the internal healing mm -hmm. that you received. And I'm like, oh, that's it. That's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to hear. And I think that's why he had me go to this particular priest mm -hmm. um, for confession. And um, since that time, we, I, I, we didn't tell any, everyone um, for a while because like, oh, I'm some spiritual euphoria. You know, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that, you know, and, um, but I'm like, no, this, you know, after, a few days, I'm like, no, this is real. So the first, I guess that was on a Wednesday, I think. Was it Tuesday or Wednesday? I can't it was remember. Wednesday. 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 Mm -hmm. And uh, then by Sunday, I'm like, well, the first people we're going to, besides my husband um, and our, family, our wife's children, um, was the um, 
go show yourself to the priest. You were talking, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so From that, that is reading. A, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that is that is what we did. So we went in and um, was this the priest you went to confession to? No, no this is a priest. different writing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but someone at St. Mark's and uh, told him what had happened. And so since that time, it has just been. Um, well, I don't know if we want to get into that yet. I don't know if you had other things you want to talk about, but um, it is just you know, obviously changed my life yes. many different ways, right? Physically, I'm up and doing and um, out adventuring with my kids and, uh, you know, being up the volunteer now. And, and my life is 100% different, but it mm-hmm. is also a, a lot of spiritual fruit too as well. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, it's interesting because the story really starts back in um, December. Alan Ames was lives in Australia, and they were finally released from their COVID exile. And he was going to go and start his healing ministry again, prompting of the spirit. And he contacted me really quick through an email. And he said, "Um, I'm I'm starting the healing ministry in St. Mark's. I want to be the first church. So let me know so I can set up the Texas tour and all of that around when St. Mark's. And I was exhausted. I was leading Mary's Women of Joy. We were doing a retreat mm-hmm. in March or in February. I don't even remember. We was a, were exhausted. I was exhausted. <laughs> and I was at Mary Fink's house, and I just heard the Lord say to my spirit, do you want to say no from others being healed of cancer and all kinds of diseases? I said, all right, Lord. So exhaustion is not an indicator of saying no to the Lord, evidently, right? No. And so I immediately texted Father Putnam. He said, yes, bring him. This all went down in 10 minutes from everything coming together in 10 minutes. And Mary Fink was there and she said, I will run St. Therese for you. And she got a hold of St. Mark, Father Mark and he said yes immediately. And um, so the Lord knew who he was going to come and heal, right? Mm -hmm. Very powerful. And we did have several healings of cancer. One was a 25-year-old woman who um, a friend of hers brought her picture to Mm -hmm. Alan Ames. And she the the young girl that received the healing didn't even practice our faith. And she had stage four ovarian cancer. She had only a 16% chance to live. The phone went up. Alan prayed over it. Two days later, she went for her PET scan, completely healed. She had a healed party this summer. Praise <laughs> you, God. Praise you, so, God. So, yep. the Holy Spirit works outside of our restraining little possibilities. He leads us. And yes. He led you first to the healing of yes. bargaining right. with the Lord. Right. Need right. that first. Need that first. Need that so first good. healing. Yeah. 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 So, so, Ryan, clearly this experience had to be mind-blowing for right. you as well, even though it wasn't a personal, dramatic, and physical healing right. for you, what was that experience? What did that experience do inside right. of you to see the Lord work in that way? Well, something you said took me back to um, that evening. I didn't ever. I never wanted to get in the way. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to feel as if I was being obnoxious to that person because you, as you said it you just stood there so the last thing I wanted is okay let's go you know go back to your seat you got 400 people waiting <laughs> yes. I, didn't, I didn't want the, that to be the approach but in a way we had a job to do we had to keep things moving we had as you said thousands of people were coming up so it was hard to know when to go in and gently touch and say do you want, and, and when not to because I had not mm-hmm. seen this before you know before St. Therese and I'm glad I had St. Therese because uh, St. Mark was a, was a much larger audience, more slayings, and, and, and more um, dramatic type of responses to the Holy Spirit. So, uh, did I feel, you, f- you feel it, you do mm-hmm. feel it, and though you might not be receiving the healing that that person felt, mm-hmm. but you feel the warmth, you feel something happening to you as all these people, as you're doing 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 people that you are standing next to as they're receiving the Holy Spirit. How can I not, you know, be collateral damage, right? I mean, I'm, get, I'm receiving the Holy Spirit. And it was um, it was a special evening. It was very special. And that's why I said, Gene, if you need me to go to Greensboro, I'll drive to Greensboro for three <laughs> nights in a row. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a special evening. Both evenings were very special. Different, but special. Yes. And I would have to say the men, after um, they were catchers, they were blown away. They were like kids in a candy store. They all came up to me and said, okay, 
We want to um, we want to catch tomorrow. We'll follow you to Greensboro. Does Alan Ames need a team? Everybody want to be a part of his team, right? Very much so. <laughs> and Very we, much we will so. get into on the next show. Mm. How does this radiate out? Yes. Because it's not the Lord is never a one and done. Right. 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 You know, it radiates out. But let's go to the Lord now in prayer and thanksgiving. Right. And Katie, if you feel comfortable, if you want to lead us in that prayer of thanksgiving, Ryan, if you want to jump mm -hmm. in. So let's sanctify our time together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. It has been such mm -hmm. a blessing for me, I know, and um, just the opportunity to share the story and just share about your love, um, which is amazing. It's it's, it's even hard to put into words how much you love us. And we are so incredibly thankful and for um, <clears throat> just an increase in our own strength and our own, in, our, in our faith in you. And uh, remembering that, um, I learned this in, a, in one of your uh, uh, trainings, that faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Yes. And please help us to remember that, to go forth and share your love, even when it means risk, because... Um, everyone needs to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And we just want to pray for all of our listeners that you are feeling right now that you want to have a deeper encounter with Jesus as Ryan, as Katie. Just ask for that encounter with him. He is there for you. He thirsts for you. And he wants you to know his abundance. He wants you to know it. He wants you to experience it. He wants you to he wants to you to rest in it so you can go out to the world and speak of the good news as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, we do have another show. We, have another show. <laughs> we knew when this was starting, this is there's gonna be another show. So ladies, tune in next week for another joyful echo so you can continue to hear how the Holy Spirit has anointed our lives. Yes, and if you're feeling like, how do I feel about this? That's okay. We're Take fine that to the Lord. Take the it week. to the Lord. He has no problem with that. No. no. Evidently with the bargain. Right? <laughs> we will see you next week, ladies. Have a good and a blessed week.